மாஸ் கீழப்பாவூர் வெல்கம் டு மாஸ் கீழப்பாவூர் சேனல் ஐ எம் டாக்டர் அருணா ஷண்முகவேல் லெட் எஸ் சி எ மோட்டிவேஷனல் கோட் அவர் ஜாப் இஸ் நாட் டு ப்ரிப்பேர் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் ஃபார் சம்திங் அவர் ஜாப் இஸ் டு ஹெல்ப் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் ப்ரிப்பேர் தெம் செல்ஸ் ஃபார் எனி திங் In this video, we are going to learn about the features, ossification and clinical anatomy of frontal bone. The parts of frontal bone are squamous part, nasal part, orbital plates and zygomatic process. The squamous part has four surfaces. They are external surface, internal surface, two temporal surfaces. The borders of squamous part are two sphenoidal borders and one parietal border. The sphenoidal borders articulate with the greater wing of sphenoid. The parietal border articulates with parietal bones and form coronal suture. The meeting point of frontal and parietal bones is the brachma. The external surface of the squamous part shows frontal tuberosity on each side of the midline about 3 cm above the supraorbital margin. This eminence is prominent in children and females. Just above the supraorbital margin, superciliary arches are seen. These arches give origin to the muscle corrugator supercilii. These arches are prominent in males deep to the arches the frontal ear sinus is present which is supplied by supraorbital nerve the superciliary arches of both sides meet in smooth elevation called glabella the supraorbital margin separates squamous part and orbital plate the supraorbital notch or sometimes as a foramen is seen at the junction of lateral 2/3 and medial 1/3 of supraorbital margin this notch or foramen transmits supraorbital nerve and vessels frontal notch or foramen is medial to the supraorbital foramen and transmits supratrachlear nerve and vessels both supraorbital and supratrachlear nerves are branches from frontal nerve that arises from the ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve the internal surface of squamous part is concave and shows impressions caused by sulci and gyri of frontal lobe of cerebral hemispheres a vertical median groove is present in this surface called sagittal sulcus it lodges the superior sagittal sinus the edges of sagittal sulcus unite below to form the median frontal crest this crest gives attachment to the anterior part of the fox cerebri small pits are seen by the side of sagittal sulcus for arachnoid granulations the frontal crest ends in a notch at its lower end when it articulates with the cribriform plate it is converted into foramen cecum if foramen cecum is present it transmits an emissary vein which connects vein from nasal mucosa with superior sagittal sinus the right and left temporal surfaces form part of temporal fossa a ridge starts from this process curves upward and backward dividing into superior and inferior temporal lines the superior temporal line gives attachment to temporal fascia and inferior temporal line gives origin to temporalis muscle the nasal part projects downwards from squamous part in the midline between right and left supraorbital margins it articulates with two nasal bones at the center frontal process of maxilla and lacrimal bones on either side the meeting point of frontal and nasal bones is called nasian
the nasal spine is a midline projection from the nasal notch this spine articulates with nasal crest of articulated nasal bones in front and perpendicular plate of ethmoid behind the orbital plates are triangular curved plates extending horizontally backwards from the supraorbital margin these plates are separated from each other medially by a u shaped ethmoidal notch which articulates with cribriform plate of ethmoid bone the orbital plate has two surfaces cerebral surface and orbital surface the cerebral surface forms floor of anterior cranial fossa this surface is irregular with ridges and larges the sulci and gyri of frontal lobe of cerebrum the orbital surface forms roof of orbit this surface shows lacrimal fossa in its anterolateral part the lacrimal fossa larges lacrimal gland on the medial side of the roof of orbital cavity the frontal bone has the trochlear fossa it gives attachment to trochlea or pulley which is a modified form of periosteum superior oblique muscle of eyeball passes through this pulley the orbital plate posteriorly articulates with lesser wing of sphenoid and medially with the ethmoid bone between the frontal bone and ethmoid bone there are two openings anterior and posterior ethmoidal foramina for the corresponding nerves and blood vessels the zygomatic process is very short process one on each side extends from the lateral end of supraorbital margin and articulates with frontal process of zygomatic bone temporal line arises from posterior margin of zygomatic process splits into superior and inferior temporal lines frontal air sinuses are found deep to glabella and superciliary arches they are separated by a septum the presence of frontal air sinus make the frontal bone as a pneumatic bone the frontal sinus are small at birth they become well developed by 7th or 8th year of life but reach their full development by puberty let us move on to the ossification of frontal bone frontal bone undergoes membranous ossification there are two primary centers appearing near the frontal tuberosities at 8th week of intrauterine life the nasal spine may develop from two secondary centers appearing at 10th year of life at birth the bone consists of two halves separated by a frontal or metopic suture this suture gets obliterated from above downwards by second to eighth year the metopic suture may persist partially or completely in 8% of individuals shall we see some clinical correlations clinically the frontal sinusitis is diagnosed by eliciting tenderness by pressure over the medial one third of supraorbital margin radiological diagnosis is made by the presence of opacity within the frontal air sinus in an x-ray film the fracture of orbital plate of frontal bone leads to hemorrhage in the orbit the hemorrhage occurs a triangular shape underneath the conjunctiva with apex towards the cornea and base towards the orbital margin the frontal squama is prone to fracture in neonates and infants it is a depressed fracture that is a dimple in the bone in adults it is a fissured fracture that is the depressed area always shows an irregular line of fracture at its periphery shall we end up the session with a quote the day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit thank you for watching if you like this video don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon select all to get instant notification
Thank you.